Welcome to the Occupational Safety and Health Training. This training is dedicated to such important topics as maintaining safety at the workplace, helping employees to eliminate hazardous conditions, and avoiding them by following the OSHA standards requirements. Here is your task for this session. You are in the switchboard room. You need to connect a new wire to an existing circuit breaker panel 1. Click Next to proceed to the next step. Now, collect proper protective equipment from the list. A hard hat, safety glasses, tool belt, AC-DC voltage meter, and dielectric gloves. Teleport to the objective marker near the circuit breaker panel 1 and open the panel door. Great! Now, grab an AC-DC voltage tester from your tool belt. Take the test leads in both hands and connect them to the highlighted markers on the circuit breaker panel and check if there is a live voltage. Now, when we figured out that the circuit breaker panel 1 is energized, we need to search for the isolation point for this panel on a single line diagram. Teleport to the objective marker near the single line diagram on the wall. Great! Now that you're aware of the isolation point, you need to teleport to the objective marker near the switchboard panel 3 and turn off the highlighted circuit breaker. Notice that we need to tag out this switch to prevent uncontrolled switching. Put dielectric gloves on the table. Grab a tag and attach it on the switch itself. Great! Now you are ready to connect a new wire into the existing circuit breaker panel. Teleport to the objective marker near the circuit breaker panel 1 and pull the wire with your hands towards yourself to fit it inside the panel. you got an electric shock. In real life, it will induce ventricular fibrillation which can lead to arrhythmia and cardiac arrest. It seems like the panel in fact wasn't de-energized and while you were trying to reach the wire and pull it towards yourself, you have accidentally exposed yourself to a live voltage on a bus bar system. Let's have a look at some of the contributing factors that led to this fatality. 
and employees should verify the location of all energy isolation points. According to the OSHA standards, each authorized employee shall receive training in the recognition of applicable hazardous energy sources, the type and magnitude of the energy available in the workplace, and the methods and means necessary for energy isolation and control. The additional test shall be performed. After switching off the circuit breaker on the switchboard panel 3, an additional test shall be performed to verify that isolation and de-energizing of the panel 1 were accomplished. According to the OSHA standards, before starting work on machines or equipment that have been locked out or tagged out, the authorized employee shall verify that isolation and de-energizing of the machine or equipment have been accomplished. If normally energized parts are exposed to contact by an employee while the machine or equipment is de-energized, a test shall be performed to ensure that these parts are de-energized. Change in the energy control procedures. At some point, the tagged out circuit breaker had been crosswired with the other breaker, and thus the panel was not de-energized in fact. According to the OSHA standards, Retraining shall be provided for all authorized and affected employees whenever there is a change in their job assignments, machines, equipment, or processes that present a new hazard, or any time there is a change in the energy control procedures. Use proper protective equipment. Another factor that led to an electric shock, unclad dielectric gloves. Even with the gloves on and long sleeves, the accidental touch to a bus bar would not lead to an electric shock because of insulation materials. You have completed the Occupational Safety and Health Training.